Just into our newsroom, we have the latest update on new coronavirus numbers in Florida. The state has now climbed to more than 16,000 cases with more than 350 deaths. Here in the Bay Area, about 1,900 people have contracted the virus. 58 have died. A drug taken by millions of people every day is now in the national news and spotlight as doctors begin experimenting with it to treat COVID-19 patients, including those right here in Florida. I'm talking about hydroxychloroquine. It's shown to work in some patients with COVID-19. But as our very own Avery Cotton shows us, now those who've taken it for years are worried. Hydroxychloroquine is now in the hands of Florida doctors as they work to treat those with COVID-19. Due to negative side effects like cardiac arrhythmias and serious eye damage. Is really the benefit going to outweigh the risk? Hydroxychloroquine has mainly been used experimentally to treat the sickest of patients. Not everyone with the virus will be treated with this drug. So for folks who are testing positive, they have the mild symptoms, they go in, they have the cough, they have the high fever, the muscle aches. They don't need to expect to go into the doctor's office and walk out with a prescription. And ultimately, it's really going to be the decision of that, cl that clinician and that practitioner whether they feel comfortable in uh, prescribing that type of medication. While the president has touted the drug claiming this could be the answer, doctors explain there are still many unknowns. Does this help people recover faster, for instance? Um, and or people really getting better on their own? And it may be working for some individuals, um, but then again, uh, what we're really looking at is, well, what is the clinical trial results telling us? The anti-malaria drug is one that's been used for years in patients who suffer from lupus. Now, high demand is creating low supply. I would be very concerned. Marie Sabina certainly is. But everywhere you call, every pharmacy is telling you there's their shortage or their supplies low or they've already run out. She says she can probably get by without a month's supply, but feels that, like her, millions of others aren't being taken care of. We've gotten put to the back burner and, and everything's gotten redirected. So it's, it's frustrating. Now Marie is left to wonder what she'll do without the drug approved to help her if it becomes unavailable. You just try and get really creative to, to kind of tap the, your sources and try and find the medication. And right now, the FDA has not approved this specific treatment for coronavirus patients. And if you or someone you know has prescribed this drug for another medical issue and you have concerns, you are urged and asked to talk directly to your doctor about a specific plan. This morning, a new source of help is available for those who've lost their job during this pandemic. The state launched a mobile-friendly site to apply for unemployment. This after the state got thousands of complaints from people having trouble applying for assistance. We've posted a link to the site on WFLA.com. You can also access it through our free WFLA app. COVID-19 continuously changes the way we live our lives. It's even impacting the way we mourn the loss of a loved one. Funeral homes are now adjusting the way they carry out funeral services in response to the pandemic. Eight on your side's Deanne Roberts tells us what changes local funeral homes are having to make. Normally, this chapel is packed for a funeral, but due to COVID-19, services are limited to 10 people, so now loved ones are watching services through a screen. This process is all new to Aiken's funeral home. It's been operating for 40 years, and for the first time, it's changing the rules on who can attend and how to interact with grieving families. Under social distancing guidelines, only 10 people are allowed to attend a funeral, and there are markers inside indicating where they can sit. Hugging, kissing, and other physical contact is not allowed. Aiken's funeral home is also live streaming services for other family members and friends. There are viewings, but only one person at a time can view the body and pay their respects. The director says social distancing guidelines are making it that much harder for families to mourn. Death is constant. It is a part of life and it's just making it more difficult that people can't or don't want to expose themselves in, in large crowds and funerals are usually large gatherings, so we, we don't have the numbers that we would normally have. Burial services are also being live streamed because they have a 10 person maximum as well. Aiken's Funeral Home is operating with a smaller staff requiring them to wear protective gear and if a meeting is necessary, it's being conducted over the phone. I'm reporting in Tampa, Deanne Roberts, 8 on your side. 
The coronavirus pandemic is even changing the way Passover is being observed. Roughly 30 people typically gather in Rabbi Josh Hershen's Tampa home for the holy day. But because of the need for social distancing in place, he prepared a, a Zoom Seder instead. The idea of not being surrounded by family and friends for Passover is very disappointing and saddening, but Rabbi Hershen says he knows sacrifices have to be made to protect what's really important. When it became clear that this was going to be happening, it, it was devastating. But, you know, the reality is, is that uh, every religion should be emphasizing the importance of life and the importance of safety and security and the importance of health. The rabbi says his family usually does not use electricity on Passover, but they're making an exception this year.